the most outstanding and to some degree unexpected difference that we found is that African Americans have much higher antibody responses to this viral vaccine, rubella, than we have seen in any other population. Why would that be? Well, that's the subject of the next set of studies, but it's really a foundational fa finding in this respect. We sort of have a population level approach to medicine. We do it with drugs, we do it with vaccines. We assume everybody's alike and that they all respond the same. This is the basis of personalized or individualized medicine. Our group has been among the first to show that what we know for how people respond to drugs turns out to also be true in how people respond to biologics like vaccines. So you and I may respond very differently as a cohort, say, of Caucasians, but my colleague who's African American and the population of African Americans turn out to have a much better response to that vaccine. Hispanics have a lower response. Well, this is really important in terms of how we deliver vaccines, how we design vaccines, perhaps the safety of vaccines. And this is new information in the biologic field that I think is going to change how we practice medicine. The vaccine, in essence, is working differently. The question is why? It's the same vaccine in human beings, administered the same way, and yet it stimulates a very different set of gene expression and protein secretion, that protein being antibody, that protects us when we see the virus. A lot of people haven't heard of rubella. They think it's a disease that doesn't exist anymore. And, and that would be naive to think that. Certainly in California, along some of the border states, we do still see rubella cases. In Japan and in Europe, we're seeing outbreaks of rubella and measles, their vaccines that are given together, primarily because of people rejecting the vaccine out of unfounded fears about the safety of the vaccine. But the interesting thought occurs to me, maybe we only have to give African Americans half the size dose that we give to Caucasians. That's an example of individualizing our approach to somebody. Eventually what will happen is it won't be something as complicated as race, it will be genetically based. So we will look at somebody's genes that are important to developing immunity and based on which ones they carry, say, you don't need the vaccine, you're not at any risk, or you need twice the dose of the average person or half the dose, or you're at risk for this kind of side effect. And that changes how we practice medicine. It's, a, it's an exciting new era in that regard. So we may be able to save cost, we may be able to reduce the amount of side effects. If you only need half as much vaccine to reach the same level of protection, we're adding cost and potentially risk by giving you double what you actually need. We could extend the vaccine supply twice as far. Take uh, African countries, for example, with this kind of knowledge and with the cost of vaccines, what might it mean that for the same cost we could immunize twice as many people? That would just be one practical example of, a, of an outcome that would be uh, important, at least at a population level. Fundamentally, what it begins to do is build a scientific case and database for this idea. If we see these kinds of dramatic differences with this vaccine, will we see it with another vaccine? The answer is yes. We've seen that with other vaccines. And does that inform our approach to new vaccine development. For example, um, African Americans, Hispanics, maybe other more traditional minority groups could be at greater risk of certain diseases. Let's take HIV, for example, or hepatitis B, or any of a number of diseases. Might knowing this about genetics and how they respond to a vaccine inform how we go about developing a new vaccine for groups most at risk of that disease. The other thing that we, we didn't find in this study, but we have found in other studies, is the effect of gender or sex. Uh, traditionally, for every vaccine that's been studied, women always respond better than men. Always, without exception. Why is that? How do we take advantage of that information in building new vaccines and delivering the vaccines we currently have? 
No, it's, it's worth pointing out that in uh, years, decades past, um, Hispanics, African Americans, other minority groups tended to get excluded from research and therefore the benefits of medical research. That's changed and we certainly understand the, the value of that. This study uh, demonstrates the important differences that one can find and informs how we approach the medical care of those groups.